After waiting so long on Digimon Survive, it's finally here. The game was marketed as a hybrid visual novel with roughly 70% point and click based text sequences and 30% grid based combat. Now that it's arrived, we can confirm that the game is pretty much exactly that. But the question remains, is it actually worth your time and money? Or more importantly, was it actually worth the wait? Obviously, how much fun you have with the game is going to be purely subjective and I do think that this will be a very mixed bag for some folks. Ultimately, you guys will have to decide for yourself, but in the meantime, my name is Jack, aka Mr. Wolfie, and I'm here to tell you everything I liked about Digimon Survive and also everything I would have liked to have seen improved. As we get going, it's worth pointing out that if you haven't started and are thinking about picking it up, hard mode is a must for this game. Secondly, we should also address the fact that Survive suffered a turbulent development process with multiple team overhauls and more than a few delays. The game also happened slap bang in the middle of the COVID-19 outbreaks, so make of that what you will. All I knew coming in was that we were more than due a new Digimon game and for that reason alone, I was excited. The thing Survive does unequivocally well is the art style. The set piece backdrops, the environments and the characters all look fantastic. In particular, the design and the animations of the Digimon themselves are also really good. The music is also very well done and blends together well with each scenario the game poses. The setting of the digital island was perfect, creating a spooky balance of both mystery and danger. There is a bit of a Jurassic Park vibe here and the game does a good job of making you feel the threat hiding out there in the wilderness. This was a great throwback to some of the more old school Digimon series and I hope they continue to utilise this environment in future Digimon games. The grid based gameplay, although slightly shallow at times, does well enough and can be fairly fun. The Digivolution moments remain pretty exciting and definitely my favourite point of the action. Collecting building your own Digimon team is always a good time for me and that is also present in Survive. I'll talk a bit more about the mechanics of recruitment later but the general freedom of picking and choosing your favourite lineup is really good. The fact that there are different Digivolutions based on your decisions in game is really cool. Your choices as Takuma factoring into your Agamon evolution line and the reveal of each stage was exciting for me. The UI of the game was incredibly clean and performance on PC was smooth sailing for the most part. We did encounter some initial PC issues at launch regarding the opening cutscene but these problems have since been fixed. The game is naturally quite small at only around 6 to 7 gigs and so you'll find that it downloads incredibly fast and the game is fairly lightweight. Once we got going, everything felt sleek and ran incredibly well. Now that we've covered all of my pros, we have to look at some of the shortcomings of the game. I am biased in favour of Digimon, I always want the games to do well and I always want to enjoy a good Digimon game, so please know that everything I'm about to say comes from a place of love. The excess bloat during the visual novel sequences are unapologetically rough in this game. I understand that visual novel games can typically pan out like this and in that sense the game isn't too far outside of the norm. However, this doesn't excuse some of the repetition that goes on inside of Survive. When the group spends 25 minutes each chapter discussing whether they are going to split up or stay together, my faith really does start to falter. Although the story is intriguing at parts, the limited number of characters does lead to predictable moments. For the most part, the story does well enough. But, there are instances where things are introduced but not really explained or developed. I can't tell if these points are left artistically vague intentionally or if the devs just run out of time. Choices don't really seem to matter all that much. There are deaths that are scripted on the first playthrough so although the illusion of choice is presented, it's not really that important. From my understanding, there are three regular endings and an additional true ending, but who lives and dies is actually tied to a singular choice that's made in chapter 8. Despite what I originally first surmised, the affection system only determines the fate of two characters, only one of which is controllable, and that doesn't even take place until New Game Plus. The endings are fairly distinct in their own regard, but my point is that your decisions have less consequences than you might have originally anticipated. Although the grid-based combat is a first for Digimon games, it is unfortunately also quite simplistic. It's more like a less robust, less complex version of games like Fire Emblem Three Houses or Final Fantasy Tactics. The terrain nor the ranged attacks seem to make any difference to how things actually play out when you're fighting. By default, every Digimon only has one basic attack and one special attack, meaning that almost every scenario kind of plays out somewhat the same. Although there are some variety in certain areas of the game, each level is basically just moving your units forward to attack an enemy. There's not really any point defence, there's no objective capture, there's no base infiltration, or even just survival-esque missions. Moving on to the cast then, I found that most of the characters were difficult, sporadic and of course completely oblivious to the fact that you're single-handedly carrying them around in your protagonist wheelbarrow. As discussed earlier, overdone conversation and reiterated arguments are definitely the main pace killer here. In fairness, all of the cast are young, stressed out and understandably confused, however the human crew rarely input anything new or useful, and they also don't start showing any signs of gusto until the end of the game. Each of the kids are given a small backstory of flavour which can be intriguing in the beginning, but these aren't really developed much, if at all. 
In addition, each character tends to lean into their archetype a little too hard at times, to the point where there is often little room for anything else. Because the game is supposed to be centred around the visual novel angle, I would really hope for a little bit more ingenuity here. If the gameplay elements have indeed been sacrificed a little bit for the sake of the plot, then the characters and how they revolve around the plot have to be more interesting. Recruiting Digimon was fun at first but definitely gets more awkward later in the game, particularly when it comes to the Mega Digimon. Although I enjoyed that my decisions in the game made catching certain types easier, the negotiation sequence prior was so random and devoid of logic that I was often left a little bit confused. Similarly, the same could be said when trying to grow the affections of your human teammates. Minoru was mostly fine and Kaito was okay at times too, however many of the character interactions felt completely arbitrary making it a 1 in 3 or a 1 in 2 guessing game at best. Now the game does offer you the ability to save scum and load if you get things wrong, but to me that's like an arsonist handing you a fire extinguisher after Molotov and your grandmother. The reason this can all be a little frustrating is because the affection system is tied to your power synergies in game and also your teammates digivolution options. For a lot of players, this will determine how you perform in the later chapters of the game and especially in some of the final fights. In regards to the roster, there are 117 Digimon in Survive, which isn't a bad number at all, but it would have been nice to see this roster expanded if a sequel was ever considered. I found that some of my squad were overlapping by the time they got to Mega Form, which felt a little bit underwhelming. I also think, not that this is totally important, but it would have been nice if the Digimon tied to the main cast, e.g. Floramon, Dracmon, Falcomon, should have had exclusive Digivolution forms. At one point I found I had a few duplicate ultimates because my own wild Digimon evolved before the locked Digimon of the main cast, and this felt a little bit messy. And, for the most part, that is pretty much my main concerns. I'll also add that in the later chapters there is a bit of suffrage from the spam of these generic frog enemies. Again, I'm unsure of whether this happened because they were trying to save time during development, although I would assume that's probably exactly what it was. To summarise then, do I hope people enjoyed this game? Yes, of course. If you guys are having fun with Survive, then I'm delighted for you. I know many of my own community have already played their second or third playthroughs, and it's been awesome chatting with everyone about the game over the past few weeks. Ultimately, I think it will come down to personal preference on how much time you spend with this one. Do I hope Survive paves the way for an improved sequel, or even just other Digimon games? Yes, definitely. Survive pretty much achieves what it sets out to do, and as a result, for me personally, it wasn't too bad. However, this game is undoubtedly weak in more than a few areas, whether this is due to a rocky development cycle or a lower budget, I don't know. At the end of the day, we still have to judge the game for what it is, a £40 purchase launched in 2022, and although it does look awesome, and although it's great to be playing a Digimon game again, there is definitely a lot of room for improvement. Thanks for watching guys, be sure to let me know your own thoughts about Survive down in the comments, whether you had a good time, or perhaps anything you would have liked to have seen enhanced in the future. I have been Jack, aka Mr Wolfie, love y'all lots folks. Peace.